Welcome to Ghost Girl Diaries, the new podcast. Today we're diving into the intriguing origins of ghost hunting. It all began in the 19th century. It was a time of groundbreaking technological advances, with inventions like the telegraph and the steamboat, and radio was changing the way people experienced the world. But it was also the peak of spiritualism. This is an era where people became captivated of understanding and connecting with the other side. This is where things like seances and Ouija boards became popular. Even automatic writing swept through communities. Anyone and everyone was willing to understand and be able to communicate with their loved ones on the other side. You might wonder why these two movements, supernatural and science, ended up evolving together. For many, the mysterious ways of the way technology worked almost felt magical like within a radio. Even the telegraph enabled communication across long distances. The phonograph preserved voices from beyond the grave. And then scientists themselves came drawn to the question, could these tools bridge the gap between life and death? Join me as I uncover the truth behind the scientific proof of interacting with the other side is intertwined with the interactions and origins of ghost hunting. It has all led up to what we know today. Welcome, brave souls, to another haunting chapter of Ghost Girl Diaries, where the supernatural awaits, transmitting from the other side, where paranormal meets glamour. I'm your host this evening, Crystal Leandra, the Queen of the Dead, a paranormal filmmaker and investigator, and the glam behind the ghost hunt. Here we dive into spine-chilling hauntings, explore the unknown, and uncover the secrets across the most haunted locations in the world. Whether you're a believer or a skeptic, you're in for a thrill. So grab your EMF meter, your crystals, and your cross, because things are about to get supernatural with a little bit of glam. Let's get haunted. This is Ghost Girl Diaries. In this episode, we're going to talk about the origins of ghost hunting. This begins in the roots of folklore, rich history from Europe all the way to indigenous cultures. It doesn't matter what society you're from, everyone has a fascination with the paranormal. Let's begin with the origins of folklore. Paranormal activity has deep roots in ancient societies, including Greek. There's also evidence that points to Romans and even indigenous cultures of stories of the supernatural and ghosts existing. Encounters have been woven into the fabric of our daily lives. These tales often served as unexplained or cautionary lessons that have passed down from generation to generation. This has laid the foundation of cultural perception of the paranormal. My favorite era is spiritualism and the Victorian age. The 19th century saw the biggest surge of interest in the supernatural. It was fueled by the rise of the spiritualist movement. Seances, tarot cards, mediums, and any attempts to contact the dead became mainstream, including front covers of newspapers. This sparked an era of obsession with communicating with spirits. The Victorian fascination with the afterlife would become the cornerstone of modern ghost hunting, with seances taking place in drawing rooms, the back rooms of pubs, making the supernatural a subject of social conversation. It gave people something to talk about. There were lots of early ghost hunting organizations. As the interest in the paranormal grew within the 20th century, it brought an establishment of ghost hunting groups, and one of the most notable was the Ghost Club. This one was founded in London in 1862. This has become one of the oldest paranormal investigation societies on the planet that we know exists. These pioneers began documenting their paranormal experiences, collecting testimonies, and using a more methodical approach. They wanted to understand the ghostly phenomena, and this marked the beginning of ghost hunting as we know it. It was now considered an organized field of study. The influence of pop culture in the 20th century. In the 20th century, the rise of mass media and the pop culture dramatically shaped the public perception of what we know of ghosts today. This included books, movies, and even television shows. Think back to things like The Exorcist. Did you know people actually vomited inside of the theater when The Exorcist was released? I mean, compare it to now, the horror films that we see nowadays. To the terrifier, you got nothing. Shows like Ghostbusters, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and The Most Haunted, it turned the paranormal into the mainstream phenomena that we know today. And to that, we are thankful. Without this movement happening, we wouldn't be going where we're headed with paranormal. And I truly believe at some point in the near future, paranormal will be able to solve cold cases and even crimes. 
These movements helped modernize what we knew as ghost hunting, and it often sensationalized the image of ghost hunting, blending not only paranormal and supernatural, but with the entertainment. Technological advancements and integration. The late 20th century marked the revolution of ghost hunting technology. Investigators started understanding and learning to use things like EMFs and tools that only scientists would have used before. EMF meters, infrared cameras, digital recorders, and this would all capture evidence that would prove the other side actually exists. Evidence of the paranormal is more than just a scientific approach. We now had proof of our experiences. These devices allowed an objective documentation of ghostly activity, moving away from the reliance of personal stories, ancestors, and even make a noise on the wall for me. It was giving us some sort of documented scientific proof to be able to understand that the afterlife exists in the 21st century and beyond. In recent years, ghost hunting has become more technologically sophisticated than it ever has been with tools as augmented reality apps, which we're going to start testing those here really shortly in the future. Thermal imaging cameras and even 3D mapping devices have now created an even funner playground for investigators to experience the other side. These innovations are now pushing the boundaries of paranormal research further than it's ever been before. Imagine just starting out with things like tarot cards or even when you would put powder down on the floor to see if energy had walked through it. These tools now provide data and it's bridging the gap between the mystical and the scientific. Collaboration and research. Today's ghost hunting community thrives on collaboration. Online forums, conferences, groups, and even academic studies now create an environment for people to find like-minded individuals that have an interest in paranormal. We have now created a global network of investigators who share things like findings and even experiences, new ways, innovative technology, and ways to investigate. We have now created a collective approach that has helped increase the credibility of the field, and it's paving the way for more rigorous research and discovery. So now we're headed to even better and more modern technology. What does the future of ghost hunting look like? Looking ahead of the future for ghost hunting, it's a blend of tradition and even innovation. I feel like there's new things coming out every day. Some things work and some things don't. But with emerging technologies and even things like AI, artificial intelligence, and even virtual reality, we're right on the horizon of breaking down that barrier from the other side. We're now gonna be able to search in new dimensions using all of these new tools in the afterlife. And as the evolution of ghost hunting only continues, it's driven by a blend of ancient curiosity and modern technology. We're gonna venture deeper into the mysteries of the unseen. Let's talk about some of the earliest ghost sites that we have on record. The first recorded ghost attack or story, it dates back to the first century AD. The Roman author and statesman, Pliny the Younger, P-L-I-N-Y, the Younger. He wrote about a haunting in his house in Athens. He describes this, a ghostly old man with a long beard, rattling chains, wandering through the house. This chilling tale was one of the earliest reports on a spectral presence within someone's home. And this set the stage for countless others in history, even creating a stage for people to feel brave enough to talk about their haunts at home as well. Greek writer Lucian and Roman playwright Plautus also told their own eerie ghost stories. Centuries later, in 856 AD, one of the first poltergeists, which we know what a poltergeist is, it's definitely the loud, noisy, banging sort of ghost, was reported in a cause of a physical disturbance. This was reported from a German farmhouse. This poltergeist apparently terrorized the family by throwing stones and even starting fires within the barn. This left a lasting mark on the history of ghostly phenomena, and the poltergeists are what created fear within our culture. Three famous historical ghosts. Fast forward to the 16th century and one of the most enduring ghost stories in England today. This centers around Anne Boylan. This is the second wife of King Henry VIII, and after her execution in 1536, sightings of her spirit began. This was a sighting for sore eyes where they would often see her head tucked under her arm after she had been beheaded. The main reports came from the Tower of London, Hever Castle, and other locations that she was associated with in her life. But across the ocean or across the pond, as they say, one of America's historical ghosts included none other than Benjamin Franklin. The spirit of this founding father has been reported many times in Philadelphia, particularly near the library of the American Philosophical Society, and even a statue of Franklin has said to have come to life. 
Some people claim that they've seen it dancing within the streets. And of course, no list of famous historical ghost haunts would be complete without mentioning the one and only Abraham Lincoln. Many ghost hunters across the United States have a bucket list wish to investigate the White House because it's notoriously known for being haunted. He's one of the most frequently seen ghosts within the White House. Lincoln's spirit has also been spotted at his old law office near Springfield Capitol building within Illinois. And this is where he spent most of his life before he actually became president. Haunted places. Across the globe, certain locations with rich paranormal activity exist everywhere as we know it. Some of the most active places are places like Gettysburg and battlefields. These are known to be haunted by the spirits of the soldiers that actually lost their lives on the battles. Similarly, the Queen Mary, which is a cruise ship in Long Beach, I've been there in California, it's notorious for having hauntings. It's a very, very strange haunt. Over 50 ghosts have been reported to be aboard within the Queen Mary. Strange sounds, strange sightings, and apparitions, including Winston Churchill's cigar smoke, have been documented and reported within the Queen Mary. All of you know how much I love New York City, so let's talk about a haunt there. There's a ghost of Peter, the city's last Dutch colonial, and he's a governor. He's said to roam the East Village, which is very rich and wealthy. While there's also other spirits, Mark Twain and Dylan Thomas, perhaps the most famous ghost that we know of is Aaron Burr, who was spotted near his old carriage house. The science behind ghost hunting. Ghost hunting did not start with modern technology. I mean, for centuries, people used everything but technology. Various methods have been used to contact the other side, including mirrors, scrying. One of the earliest ways to contact a spirit was something called spirit rapping. This is where you're encouraging spirits to knock on tables or ring bells. This method was popularized by the famous Fox sisters, which I've talked about them before. They were the famous 19th century sisters who brought spiritualism to the forefront of people's consciousness. We all love a strong female in paranormal, don't we, boys? Another technique some people still use today is dowsing rods. Some people say that they're not legitimate because you can manipulate them with your own energy and balance. Those date back centuries. Dowsing rods were actually originally used to find precious metals or even water. But then ghost hunters realized that the tools were manipulated easy by energy and magnetic fields, and that's how they started using them in their practice. But then technology progressed even more. That's when we started using cameras and even compasses to detect paranormal. But the early stages of using things like filmography, cameras were used to just capture still images of the unseen, and compasses were held to detect unusual magnetic fields or strange energy circulating around people. If you've ever seen, sometimes people would use compasses and they would just circle, 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 which is obviously very abnormal because compasses are led by the magnetic field of the earth. Magnetic field fluctuations are a very common indicator within paranormal activity. And let's not forget radios because we still use those today for the PSP7s. Now, they were originally invented during the rise of spiritualism and many ghost hunters still use them today, tuning into the static noise of the stations, hoping to catch voices from the other side. Even Thomas Edison, who was famous for his work in electricity, he explored the idea of using technology to communicate with spirits. Though he never completed his ghost machine, that was one of his missions. His interest was blending science and the supernatural. But this did set the stage for the future that we're in now. Thanks to him, it brought generations of ghost hunters understanding that we could manipulate technology to communicate with the other side. Now, although ghost hunting tools have come a long way, it's still fascinating to think about where it all began. The supernatural has always been driven by a mix of ancient curiosity and even innovative technology. And sometimes the most powerful tools are the ones that you already own yourself. They're not the ones that cost hundreds of dollars. It's just yourself, your own intuition. Use your body, your senses, and your connection to be able to connect with the other side. Let's talk about some famous cases. Oh, of course, we have the famous Bell Witch on the list. Between 1817 and 1821, the Bell family lived on a remote farm in Tennessee. They claimed to endure torment from a ghostly entity that became infamous. This is now a part of American folklore. This was known to be the Bell Witch. This spirit harassed the family, created disturbing noises, physical attacks, and even strange phenomena. This haunting is one of the earliest and most widely known and documented poltergeist cases in the United States of America. And the Bell Witch legend, it continues. It continues to captivate ghost hunters and ghost enthusiasts today. 
people still going on location to see if they can capture a glimpse of the Bell Witch. In 1986, Carmen and Al Sneaker moved into a home in southern Connecticut, unaware of it was an actual funeral parlor. Upon discovering the mortuary tools in the basement, can we just like literally think about this for a minute? Can you imagine putting all of your life savings into getting a house? I mean, back then, obviously, it was cheaper to buy a house than it is today. Can you imagine, though, you put everything you have into buying this house? And you buy this house and you, you know, sign the deed and like do the thing and you go down into the basement and you find mortuary tools. I would be mortified. I would be mortified. You know, it's haunted. It's a lot like my dad's house in Tennessee. He owned, I, I had to sell it with his estate. He owned one of the oldest houses um, in the Smoky Mountain area. And it was a, it was a mini mansion, honestly. And it was a doctor's home. And back in the day, 17, 1800s, he was the only house in this area and it had a wraparound porch. Like it was huge. It was beautiful. It had stained glass walls. So back in the day, you know, that house was worth a lot of money. But the doctor, that was where he would, uh, there were several underground, um, I guess you could call them morgues, because if people would die in the winter in Tennessee, when it was so cold, they couldn't bury them because the ground was frozen. So the doctor had morgues under his house. And when I had to go sell this property, I was horrified to have to even deal with it. It was terrifying to even think about that. Anyway, back to the story. Upon arriving, they discovered the mortuary tools in the basement. They realized their new residence might be haunted by the spirits of the deceased. This is why you should always do your research on a property before you buy it. You know what I'm saying? You pick up what I'm putting down. Paranormal disturbances quickly escalated and began, including eerie smells of rotting flesh, blood red water flowing from faucets, and violent apparitions. The family's son also began to experience unsettling visions and haunts. The family ended up turning to Ed and Maureen Warren for help, and this is where the Warrens sort of started their fame. Determined that the hauntings were now connected. Remember the haunting in Connecticut? You know where I'm going with this? Determined that these hauntings were connected to the deceased. They believed that they had maybe been treated poorly at the funeral home, and the case became notorious for its shocking and disturbing nature, including claims of violent paranormal interactions. It was a really dark case, in my opinion, one of the darker ones, the Perron family. In 1971, the Perron family moved into a sprawling, beautiful farmhouse in Rhode Island, but they were completely unaware of its dark history. This is what we know as the Conjuring House. Over the years, they would discover that many former inhabitants within the house had met very tragic ends, some through murder, some through suicide, and the spirits of these individuals that met tragic ends unfortunately remained within the house. Ed and Lorraine Warren were called once again. They had to go and investigate the disturbances. This ranged from playful interact to even children. The children claimed they experienced happy moments, but then they would change into terrifying encounters with the dark forces. The haunting soon then escalated. The parents eventually asked the Warrens to leave. Their story became the basis for the 2013 film The Conjuring, and I know there's drama going on with it right now. The Enfield Poltergeist of 1977, single mother Peggy Hodgson reports a disturbing paranormal activity within her home in Enfield. This was in England. The furniture was noted to be thrown across the room and strange knockings were heard within the walls. It was coming from inside the walls. The situation grew even more terrifying for her two daughters, Janet and Margaret. It's claimed they were photographed levitating off of the ground. Over the course of the next 18 months, there would be over 30 witnesses, including neighbors, psychic researchers, and even journalists that documented the strange events. Ed and Lorraine Warren became involved yet again. They were called in to determine if the house was actually haunted by what we know of demonic activity. The Enfield case became one of the most famous hauntings across the world. And of course, we know it was investigated by the Warrens. Annabelle the doll. Annabelle, a seemingly innocent Raggedy Ann doll, ended up gaining attention when she began terrorizing two young women. Donna and Angie claimed that the doll began to move on its own. It also left cryptic notes all over the house and even allegedly attempted to strangle one of the women at one point. A medium ended up suggesting that the doll was inhabited by a spirit of a seven-year-old girl named Annabelle. Does, do you think a seven-year-old would really try to strangle somebody? I mean, maybe. Trauma? I don't know. Ed and Lorraine Warren disagreed. They believe it was demonic. It's a demon. The Warrens took the doll and 
they kept it in their possession and that's where it obviously remains today within their museum. They ended up opening an occult museum to be able to help other people that had haunted cases across the nation and across the world. This case became one of the most well-known paranormal investigations. This also inspired the film Annabelle. I'm really convinced that like Ed and Lorraine Warren were just really good at journalism and like putting like their name in other people's mouths and that's how they got where they were going, if you know what I'm saying. The Smurl Haunting of 1974. Jack and Janet Smurl moved into a home on Chase Street in West Piston, Pennsylvania. This is outside of Scranton. Does anyone know who might live in Scranton? I don't know. Anybody have any ideas? They were confronted by a malevolent spirit and over time the Smurls experienced terrifying events that included violent attacks on their poor German Shepherd. Okay, I don't like that. I do not like animals and children hurt at all. That will make me mad. Sage it out. The German Shepherd experienced physical assaults and there were lots of supernatural occurrences within the home. The couple was allegedly sexually assaulted by the entity. Succubi? Succubus? Incubus. And their home seemed to be under control of a powerful demon. It's a demon. And after contacting yet again, you know I'm going to say it, Ed and Lorraine Warren in 1986, the Warrens confirmed the presence of a demonic force within the home. Ed Warren claimed to have witnessed a dark mass within the house. He also claimed that he received a chilling message from the demon that said, get out. The Amityville Horror. One of the most famous hauntings that we all know of. Luckily, I was lucky enough to meet Chris Lutz, one of the boys involved in the real Amityville Horror. This was the American Horror Story. Amityville captured the attention and national and, you know, worldwide attention in 1975. The Lutz family had moved into the home of Long Island, New York. Did I just say Chris Lutz? Was that right? I don't know. Yeah, it was. This, yes, because the DeFeos. I'm sorry, I want to make sure. I was like, am I channeling? Am I having like a moment? Ronald DeFeo Jr. had murdered six members of his family within the house. That's crazy. Can we talk about that for a minute? The amount of force that takes and like, I mean, I know he claimed to have like a mental breakdown that the, the, de the demons told him to do it, but like murdering six family members? Holy cow. The amount of force that takes to like plan it out. Didn't he like nail the window shut and stuff? Like we should do it. We should do a podcast on that. We should do a deep dive. If you want a deep dive on that, leave me a comment. But once again, what's wrong with y'all not researching the location? Like here's the thing, right? I'm wanting to move to the East Coast because it's haunted. So I am seeking haunted locations, not necessarily somewhere where people have been murdered, like six people. But do you know what I'm saying? Like why isn't Pete? I know it was the 60s, but like ask the neighbor, you know? How's the neighborhood, man? Don't you think someone would be honest before you just jump in and rent or buy a house? Maybe I'm just thinking like a ghost hunter. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, he murdered six members of his family over their 28-day stay, the Lutz family. They reported a series of terrifying events, including mysterious noises, levitations, and sightings of malevolent entities. You're never going to guess who they called. You want to take a guess? The Warrens. You're right. You got it. And then Lorraine Warren were called in, and they were called in to cleanse the home. Once again, look, you know, I've done podcasts about Ed and Lorraine Warren. They were good at marketing. We should all take some notes on the way they did their marketing. But you know what I honestly think? I think it was like, you know, you look at paranormal and, you know, the era that we're in, and it's still so male dominated, right? Although Ed was like, oh, I'm the voice behind it, and I'm the protector, and I'm going to sage out the demon. I think that the story and the stories and the reason they were so... Um, attention grabbing and empathetic you know the audience was empathetic to them it was an emotional investment like if you've ever researched um or taken a philosophy class on ethos pathos you know all that stuff i truly think that the reason the headlines were so captivated was because of lorraine and i think she was real i think she was legit on her psychic status but i think that people liked seeing a woman who could connect with the other side and they believed her you know, like she was a lot more empathetic to the situation where Ed wasn't. And I just, it's time for women in paranormal. It's just time. Like, why was she the only one that really stands out? You know, I think that's why they made such big headlines was because of her. The Warrens were called in to cleanse the home and they documented the strange occurrences within the investigation. This included a photograph showing a young boy with glowing eyes. That's famous. We all know that picture. Lorraine Warren later confessed that the Amityville case haunted her more than any other case, so somehow she felt connected to it. 
But once again, this case was one of the most notoriously known paranormal investigations in history as we know it. I under, and they, they changed the address on the Amityville. It's on Long Island, right? And like a family lives there. God, can you imagine? Like, here's the thing. When I talked to Chris Lutz, the Lutzes, um, he claims that his stepdad really like overly exaggerated the story. And yes, things were happening, but not to the extent that it was. Once again, it's that theory when there's so many people that believe in the case, like, you know, everyone's heard of that case, everyone knows. Don't you think something exists? Like, how do those people sleep at night? Do they sage every day? Because if I lived there, I'd just like, I'd have 24 hour incense running. Dragon's blood. The future of ghost hunting, where are we going? As technology advances, so does the potential to uncover the truth behind what is paranormal phenomena. Well, evidence of ghosts remain elusive current and future technologies are helping ghost hunters. We are pushing the boundaries of what we know. Some of these technology and tools include electron multiplying camera. This is a sensitive camera that captures photon events, which some believe may be linked to ghostly manifestations. A data logger, that's a new one. I don't own one of those. This device tracks environmental conditions, which I do believe could be connected to spirit. Things such as temperature, humidity, EMFs that can fluctuate in haunted locations. Trifield meter, we all love those. Please only use a trifield meter. If you have a K2 meter, sell it or put it in the trash can. Only use trifield meters. I've done videos on this before. This is a device that is designed to detect changes in the EMFs around you. And this is often associated with paranormal activity. 4K infrared cameras. These are cameras that are capable of recording in infrared. I prefer green screen because, or green content, because the human eye can see more in green footage. But this captures entities that may not be visible to the naked eye. And in addition to the paranormal technology, we also have paranormal tourism. You can actually become a millionaire now by opening a haunted location and making it available for overnight guests. People that are flocking to locations, UFO hotspots, and other mysterious destinations. And this is all in thanks to not only the movement we have with entertainment and all the paranormal shows, but also social media, online communities, and even marketing. There is a huge market for this now. And the fascination only continues to grow. More travelers are seeking to experience the unknown firsthand. I think we all want to know what happens to life after death. Where do our loved ones go? As one expert in the field noted, we are looking to do a range of virtual reality projects. And the topic of the underworld particularly suits virtual reality well because it's all about the place of navigation, navigating the energy. Can you imagine having a VR set with an SLS camera? That would scare the ever-loving crap out of me. Looking to the future is not just about discovering supernatural, but it's also about solving mysteries of the past. And this is something I truly, truly have a passion in and I believe in. And as the veil begins to continue to thin between the living and the dead, there's hope that ghost hunting could one day play a huge role in solving cold cases and bringing closure to unsolved crimes. I truly believe that we will live to see this day. Are you ready to explore the unknown? Join me on this exciting journey into the world of paranormal. Please make sure you follow the podcast, follow the YouTube channel for more updates and make sure that you stay curious and share your experiences with me because the truth is out there waiting to be discovered. And as always, I am hauntingly devoted to you. Stay spooky, like, comment, and subscribe for more. Signing off, the queen of the dead. And that's a wrap on today's episode of Ghost Girl Diaries. Thank you so much for joining me in my crypt. If you loved what you heard, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It helps the ghostly adventures continue. And also don't forget to follow me on all social media platforms. You can search for Crystal Leandra or Ghost Girl Diaries. Please support me on both. This is where you can catch exclusive content, behind the scenes footage, and stay up to date on all things paranormal and glam. And as always, stay curious, stay fearless, and stay spooky. And I'll catch you next time on Ghost Girl Diaries, where the dead never rest and neither do we. Until then, my ghoulish friends, sweet screams. <laughs>